Okay, good evening, ladies and gentlemen. You're all welcome uh, to our webinar this evening. Um, I'm joined on the, the webinar and what we're dealing with is the National Genotyping Programme that has been launched recently. Um, so on the, the panelists tonight are uh, my colleague, Tommy Doherty, uh, based in Chagos and Letterkenny, and Tommy will be giving um, suckler farmers and ourselves an update on the SCEP programme and I suppose key and important dates uh, during the year. Um, my other colleague, Kevin McManaman, based here in Letterkenny as well, will be giving us an update on the, I suppose, the workings or how are we going to apply for the scheme, how are farmers to apply and what's involved in it for both suckler and uh, dairy farmers. And uh, a special thanks to Chris Daly from ACBF, who has joined us here this evening and is supposed to give us a rundown on the National Genotyping Programme, what's involved in it, what's the objectives of it, and I suppose tonight is maybe a wee bit different. We're dealing with both suckler and dairy farmers and what's in it for both. So that'll be outlined by uh, Chris in his first presentation. But I suppose a few questions for the audience here tonight, and I'm aware of that there will be both suckler and dairy and farmers on the one call. And that's a bit unusual. But look, if you're a suckler farmer and you've joined SCEP, what's in it for you? You you're probably have been in BDGP over the years and you have done a certain amount of genotyping. What's in it and what is this in the next in the next number of years uh, for, you, for your farming system? Um, for dairy farmers, look, there's a very small percentage of the national dairy here genotyped uh, presently. And it's something, I suppose, um, Maybe that, you know, there's great opportunities there in the genotyping and going forward and uh, looking at the evaluation. So, look, I suppose the, the two sets of figures there, um, they're the, if you look at the EBI or the, the, the suckler indexes that are there, this will really enhance and, I suppose, improve accuracy of that information and back it up um, by genotyping a large percentage of our herd. So Chris, I'll ask you maybe to share your uh, presentation and we'll kick it off. Tonight's proceedings will uh, will be in around the hour to hour and 10 minutes. So look, we're not going to we're not going to drag it out. The other one, I suppose, just draw when Chris is getting it, his presentation up there, draw viewers attention to the, the Q&A tab at the bottom of your screen. So basically, look, you can type in your questions there. And we'll take questions throughout uh, the, the evening. So look, if there are any pressing questions, put them in there and we'll, we'll try to get around to them. Okay, okay Chris, over to you. Um, and um, look, can you maybe just uh, share your screen there, please? Yeah. Can you see it there on my screen now? Yeah, we can, Dave. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and you can hear me okay? We can hear you loud and clear. Yeah. Um, good stuff. So uh, the joys of modern technology. I'm Johnny from all the ways down the south coast of County Cork. So um some we probably got used to over over uh, COVID. But look, it still it still has its uh, it still has its uses, I suppose. Um so look, as as Shane mentioned there, I'm going to talk to you for a little bit just on the national genotyping program, uh, what exactly it is, you know, what genotyping is as well. You know, maybe some people don't fully understand what genotyping and genomics is, what its purpose is, what uh what it can bring to farming, to cattle breeding, both on the on the beef and the dairy side. So, just change this to a laser pointer. So, what is it? It's a new program that's been launched. Uh, the minister announced it there a number of weeks ago. Um, there is about twenty three million euros of funding being made available by the Department of Agriculture for it. And I suppose what it is, it's the first step towards uh, national DNA registration. So for the last number of years, there's been five or 600 herds involved in different pilot programs with ICBF that have been um, registering calves via DNA as a sort of a proof of concept or as a, as a test run really for a wider rollout of the program. So these herds were taking two samples from the calves at birth with double tissue tags. So you, most of you or all of you uh, registering calves are used to taking one sample for BVD. But these farmers that were engaged in the pilot program were taking two samples. So the second sample was taking a DNA sample, and that was going off to Weatherby's in County Kildare. The DNA was coming back to the farmer. We were giving them the sex and the parentage of the calf, and the farmer then completed the registration with, with AIM. So this program is really just a first step to rolling it out more widespread and moving from five to 600 herds to 
you know, maybe 10, 15,000 herds over the next couple of years. We're looking at getting about 800,000 cows. So there's a quota of 600,000 for dairy and about 200,000 for beef. Um, all beef herds or all suckler herds will be facilitated. Um, based on our calculations and because a lot of uh, suckler cows have been already genotyped through the BDGP and going forward through SCEP, we'll be able to accommodate you know, any, any beef herds that are interested. Dairy, there's a quota of 600,000 and that's going to work on a first come first serve basis. And the, the deadline essentially is this Friday to sign up if you are if you are a dairy herd. So um, that's just an important date to go, to keep in mind. And Kevin might touch on that later as well. Um, so the way it'll work in 2023. So it's it's uh, it's a first step, as I said, towards DNA calf registration. So for DNA calf registration to work, the breeding animals, so all of stock bulls, look, AI bulls are done anyway. And all of the breeding females on a farm have to be genotyped in order to be able to register calves via DNA the following spring. So what we will be doing in year one, 2023, is we'll be collecting genotypes on all of the breeding animals in these herds. Now, that's going to be done free of charge. It's paid for by the Department of Agriculture. And um, it's going to be picked up by BAR funding, um, which is the Brexit Adjustment Reserve Fund, which is money being made available by by the by the EU. Um, then in 2024 to 2027, these herds will be registering all of their calves via DNA. And this is all calves. And you can see in brackets underneath, including low priority male calves. So for dairy herds, it's not just a heifer calves. Every single calf born in the herd has to be registered by DNA. And it'll be done by double tissue tags. So as I said, you're all used to the, the single tissue tag, which was done for BVD. These will be double tissue tags. So one tag will take a sample for BVD. The other will take a sample for the DNA registration. And I suppose it removes the need for a button tag afterwards. When you look at a calf, the tags look exactly the same once, once, the, once the tags are applied. But both tags will have collected a tissue sample. What is genotyping? It's essentially collecting the DNA from an animal to try and better predict what traits that animal has inherited from its sire and dam. Okay, so we have a, a, a farmer here on the left hand side, it could be some suckler heifers he's looking to, to select from. On the right hand side, maybe a, a batch of, of dairy replacement heifers and which ones will I keep? So the farmer could have 10, 15, 20 heifers to, in, in front of them. They might only need six, seven, eight, who knows what the number is. You know, any of us involved in suckler breeding, suckler farming or dairy farming for that matter, we, we all have a pretty good idea ourselves as to what heifers we might like to keep, you know, based on their docility, based on their growth rate, based on the performance of their dams, you know, how much milk did the mothers have. But it's, we've often maybe seen heifers that we might have kept off of what we thought were very good cows. And for some reason, the heifers just didn't turn out as good as we would have expected. And usually the reason for that is that that heifer just didn't maybe bring forward the, the, the very strong genes for maybe milk fertility or whatever case may be from, from its dam. And what genotyping will help us do is to ascertain that information or to get a better um, to get a better handle on what genetics that heifer has much earlier in life. So we can make the decision whether to, to earmark that heifer for, for culling, you know, for fattening or uh, earmark her to come into the herd as, as a replacement. So it puts higher reliabilities on young animals. So there's less, it's removing some of the risk in, in, um, <clears throat> in, in keeping replacements. And if you think about the AI industry, for example, it's been, it's, it's had a massive impact on the dairy side because, you know, bull calves are now being purchased based on, on genomic evaluations. <clears throat> and there were test bulls had been, you know, purchased for years before genotyping became available back around 2009, 2010. But, I suppose the hit rate would have been much lower. That you know, if they wanted to find ten good bulls, they might have had to test maybe a hundred twenty years ago without genomics. Whereas now they might only need to test twenty bulls to find ten good ones. It just it's removing uh, some of the risk around selecting these animals, confirming parentage and preventing inbreeding. So the parentage is another big part of DNA registration. The parentage is reported to the farmer before they ever register the calf. So it removes the possibility for any errors and uh, the farmer may be having to go to the local district veterinary office then to correct the wrong dam or something like that. And identifying genetic defects. So 
Sometimes we could have a calf born with, with a particular defect or maybe it might be stillborn. And in some cases, the animals, they don't even make it to full pregnancy. If what you know, is there's a there's a cow maybe after aborting or she's uh, she's come bullying. And what, what can happen there sometimes is, you know, the fetus, there was some sort of a defect. And defects are usually the result of mating two animals that are both carriers of the same defect. So if we've all animals genotyped, we can identify animals carrying the same defects and we can advise farmers basically not to, to, to mate those animals together. So what are the steps involved? So as I said, 2023 is year one. So year one is all about getting the all of the breeding animals on farm genotyped. So any ungenotyped stock bulls, any ungenotyped cows and, uh, and females on the farm will all be picked up, okay? They'll all be done uh, free through the bar funding, the Brexit Adjustment Reserve. So it's all paid for by the Department of Agriculture. So the farmer, it, it won't cost the farmer anything to genotype those animals in 2023. All of the samples will be sent out in one batch. So it's important when you're signing up that, um, you know, maybe any any replacement females that you're planning on purchasing or anything like that, or maybe if you're if you've animals being contract reared or anything like that, you need to let us know because the tags will be ordered in one in one order in one batch. So there's no point coming back afterwards saying I'm after, you know, I forgot to move in animals into my herd from another herd or, or, or something like that. All of the all of these animals will be ordered in, uh, in the one batch. Uh, what we're looking for is to get the samples back within 21 days. And as you can imagine, there's going to be a huge volume of samples coming in this autumn. And they need to be in in a timely fashion because these samples need to be processed ahead of the, the calving season next spring. Like there's no point in getting samples, say, in the next month or six weeks and, you know, waiting till Christmas week maybe to genotype them and you're calving the second week of January then or something like that. You know, that's going to be too late. You need to get them back within 28 days of of um, of getting the samples. And look, naturally enough, you know, any animals that are already genotyped don't need to be done again. You know, you only genotype an animal once in their life. So from 2024 to 2027, so the subsequent four years of the program, participating herds, when you go to buy new tags, it'll be only double tissue tags you'll have the option to buy. OK, so we'll be linked up to all of the tag companies when you go online or you send off a form to order tags. They'll know that you're a participant in this program and they'll only be able to provide you with the double tissue tags. Then, like any of us, we'll have we'll all have some tags left over from, we will say, our last calving season. And what will be done there is we'll be able to provide button tags. Uh, to use up the existing single tissue tags. And once they're finished in, you'll be using double tissue tags so there'll be no more need for um, the button tags then. Paying for genotyping this autumn. So the cost, and I'll go through it in a bit more detail in the later slide, but the cost will be approximately six euros to the farmer, okay? One euro is extra for tags. No, it, it won't be quite that much. One euro for posts and envelopes. Again, that'll be less and four euros for genotyping, which will be paid directly to ICBF. It'll probably be actually closer to about five euros an animal uh, that it'll cost the farmer. Tag calves at birth and send samples of DNA. The critical thing here is that samples are sent off on a regular basis. Um, farmers need to be tagging calves every two to three days and getting those samples sent off because calves still have to be registered within the, within the uh, required 27 days, as is in legislation. So if you if you're waiting for maybe three weeks to send off a sample, you know, the DNA for that animal won't be back in time. Now, you'll still be able to register the animal. We're not going to block the registration, but it's just you're not you're 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 not making use of the program if you're not sending off your samples, because if you're if you're delaying the sending off of samples and you're having to register them before the DNA is back and then there's errors in the parentage after you're kind of defeating the purpose of the program then. You didn't complete the registration, so there'll be new AIM screens um, or true farm software packages. So what, what farmers participating will actually do is when a calf is born, you'll apply the tag to the calf. You will go online either through your phone or, or through on ag food, say on, on a desktop, or you can use any of the farm software packages. You'll be putting in a date of birth and a tag number, and that basically tells ICBF that a calf exists. You don't need to tell us any more other than that. You send off the sample, the tag number of the sample will be on it. So the lab will then report back the results of the genotype to us. 
and we'll be able to put the sex, the sire and the dam to the tag number and you'll then complete the registration. So all the farmer has to do at the start to let us know that a calf exists is put in a date of birth and the last uh, five digits of the tag number. That's all that's required. And as I said, the DNA results will, will complete the registration, but the farmer still has to, to complete it. They have to tick the final say to, to register the calf because again, it's the herd keeper is responsible for that. And in legislation, they, they, have, to, they have to actually click that final button to, um, to complete the registration. So just to touch on the timelines, a lot of you, a lot of you might be maybe skeptical or curious as to how long it takes. So the average is now down to about 10 days from when a sample is posted. And if you, you know, if you think about it, it's not when the calf is born, the clock starts when you post it off, because if the calf is 10 days old before you uh, post off the sample, then you've lost 10 days there. So the clock starts ticking as soon as you put the sample in the post. So day one, calf is tagged. Um, if you get the sample off straight away that day or maybe the next day, the lab has the sample by day three. Day seven, so it takes about four days to turn it around in the lab. So by day seven, the uh, parent is just confirmed and communicated with DAFM and farmer. And by day 11, so allowing another couple of days, the blue card will be out in the post. Um, look, in some cases, it's it's even been shorter than that, but we, we have to work off averages here. So it's comfortably within the 27 days. So there's no... Um, there's no need to, to fear that, that there's going to be delays in registration. The way the system is also built, if, say, for example, a sample was lost or there was some delay for some unforeseen reason, once the calf hits 20 days of age, we'll allow the registration to proceed without DNA being returned. OK, so that's an important point to remember. We don't insist on DNA once that calf goes over that 20 days because it's to allow the farmer to... Um, to, to get them registered within the required 27 days. Gina Cell, so look, this is for any dairy farmers that are on the call, okay? And look, different herds have different issues. Some have issues with, with cell count and you know milk recording is a very important uh, tool there in identifying individual cows that are problems that have issues with cell count. But look, some herds might only be milk recording maybe four or six times a year. And there could be issues between milk recordings, like there could be six weeks, two months between milk recordings. But between recordings, if a farmer noticed a bit of a spike in the in the bulk tank samples and the SCC, this is a new system that works on, on genotyping. So what would happen here is a sample would be taken from the bulk tank. And because all of the cows in the herd would be genotyped from the cells that are tested in the milk, we, could, we would be able to actually provide the farmer back a report identifying the cows that are the problem cows without doing a full milk recording of the herd. Now, this, this service is only being worked on and developed at the moment. So in case anybody rings ICBF in the morning wanting to test the bull tank, it's not available yet, but it is on the way. And as I said, if you're in a position to join the program and all of your cows are genotyped, this is something that will be available to you. And it's you know it could solve it could solve some some problems and help you to identify cows that have that have issues with cell count between milk recordings. On the beef side and maybe the dairy beef side as well for farmers that are buying calves, particularly dairy calves, this is some analysis we did on the commercial beef value. So this is a new tool that uh, dry stock farmers that are, are purchasing animals can use to identify genetically elite animals. So animals that are strong on carcass weight, carcass conformation, feed intake, docility, et cetera. So we did some analysis and we looked at, we just looked at Aberdeen Angus sired calves from the dairy herd. And we pulled out animals that had, that we had a price for the calf when they were sold. So this is a calf price. So there are animals that were sold through the mart, where we again had a price at, at weaning time. And then where we had a carcass uh, price as well. We broke them up into different cohorts based on their CVEs. So 10 to 19, 20 to 29, as you can see, the various increments down along right up to 130 to 139. Early on in life, okay, you can see the differential in price goes from 122 for the bottom end up to 186. So a 65 euro differential. So look, the higher quality calves were getting uh, rewarded, okay? By the time you got to weanling stage or animals maybe that were sold as weanlings, the differential was still there, but still quite small at 75 euros. 
But then when it came to slaughter, the difference is absolutely astronomical. You know, it's going from 1592 to 2160. Okay. So what that's really highlighting is that, well, maybe these calves are worth less, but these calves at the bottom are definitely worth more. Okay. And the farmers, I suppose, that are selling these calves down at the bottom end, you know, these really high value calves, they're they're really not being rewarded for them. And the benefit of having having all animals genotyped and all calves genotyped at birth is these CBVs will be available in March as well. And it will give the buyer confidence as well because the calves are genotyped that the parentage is 100% correct. So the genetic merit they're looking at or the CBV euro value they're looking at is something that they can rely on. Okay. So that's going to be a very important point for, for farmers, dairy farmers um, and uh, dairy beef farmers that are buying calves, but suckler farmers as well, because a lot of suckler farmers, particularly the West and Northwest are selling weanlings. And this is something that those farmers maybe buying those weanlings to take them through to finish are going to be very, um, very interested in as well, the commercial beef value. So what will it cost? So just to go through the costs a little bit in more detail. And again, you know, no point saying otherwise. This is probably one of the biggest questions or the main questions we're getting. What is it going to cost me as a farmer? So the cost to the farmer is approximately six euros. So four euros is paid directly to ICBF. So that's that that will be a, a that fee isn't going to change. And two euros in is the is the estimated cost of posting the samples and the extra cost of the double tissue tags. Now, as I said, one euros of that two euros is for postage. It's going to be less than that because if you're sending off maybe 10 samples at a time, the stamp might cost maybe two euros. So it's actually only costing maybe 20, 30 cent to post off a sample. And the extra cost of the double tissue tags, depending on who you're getting your tags from, who your supplier is, you know, that's going to vary as well. So it's not going to be the full two euros. It'll actually probably be closer to five euros in total is the cost to the farmer. The other 12 euros. So the full cost of genotyping is going to be approximately 18. So it's approximately six to the farmer. The other 12 has been covered by the Department of Agriculture and the industry. So the Department of Agriculture is paying six euros per sample. And the industry, so Meat Industry Ireland and Dairy Industry Ireland are paying the remaining six euros. Okay, so it's a third, a third, a third. A third by the AFM, a third by the industry, Meat Industry and Dairy Industry. And a third, well, it'll actually probably be less than a third for the farmer uh in in when as when i as i said because it's it's uh it's going to be just a little bit a little bit with five euros now the the important point for any beef herds that are on um or beef farmers on that are in skep the skep herds will only pay for genotypes above what their skep requirement is so the easiest way to explain it is to use a herd for example with a reference number a skep reference number of 30 They'll genotype 70% for the SCEP program. So 70% of 30 would be 21 animals. But if they're calving 30 cows a year, so they, let's say they have 30 calves, they'll have nine calves that they'll be genotyping at birth, which is above their SCEP requirement. So it's only those nine calves above the 21 that the farmer will be incurring the cost for. So if the, if the, the cost is somewhere between five and six euros, the farmer is paying... Uh, so six nines of 54 it'll cost about 50 euros a year for that farmer with 30 suckler cows to to participate in the in the the national genotyping program outside of their skip requirement because as i said the first 21 calves would be covered um and paid for through the through skip so common questions uh do dna dna and bvd samples to go to separate places so yes they do okay so Farmers at the moment uh, can send BVD samples to whatever labs that they nominate, whatever approved labs they nominate. That's the farmer's own business. And um, whereas the DNA samples will all go to one lab. OK, so because th this is being paid for by the industry, ICBF has put, you know, put out a tender for this and all of the samples will, will, will be going to the same lab for DNA. So BVD will just continue on as normal. You'll send your samples to whatever uh, lab you're dealing with but the DNA samples will all go to the one lab. Another question we get is, how do I tell the difference between DNA and BVD samples? So there'll be different colors. So the BVD samples will be in a white bottle. So the little, the little label on the bottle will be white and the samples that are going for DNA will be pink. Um, now, there are some differences as well. So depending on tag supplier, 
So there's one particular tag supplier whereby the, the, the BVD sample is a dry bottle, so there's no liquid in it. Whereas the DNA sample, it goes for genotyping, there's liquid in the bottles. But the main one really is the color. Okay, so BVD samples will be white. DNA samples for registration will be pink. How often should I post samples? So at least once a week, you know, probably twice a week, really. Um, now, there's probably maybe more pressure on dairy farmers to get calves registered quickly. There's no, there's not the same um, onus really on, on, I suppose, suckler farmers in there, you know, they're maybe not trying to get calves sold as quickly, but I would be probably recommending that samples are being posted twice a week. Um, like, you know, the sooner that you post samples, the sooner you'll receive blue cards, the sooner the samples will be back. So look, if you're comfortable with doing it every day, every two or three days, better again but the minimum would definitely be once a week because otherwise you're going to there's going to be potential uh, potential delays so just to summarize look it is a full five-year commitment okay so it's running from 2023 to 2027 as i uh, touched on already 2023 is about getting all the adult breeding animals genotyped ahead then of the four-year dna registration Direct debit will be required. So when you're signing up, you will have to put in your direct debit details. And that's just to allow for, you know, a seamless, I suppose, operation of the scheme. You will be notified when any money has been taken out of your account. So ICBF will text you. There'll be monthly runs. So we'd say if you registered, let's say for a, a, a dairy farmer, if there was 50 calves registered last month, you know, a, a direct debit would run in um and it would take 50 by four, which is the four euros paid to ICBF. So it would be 200 euros for that 50 calves. Like I said, beef farmers that are participating in SCEP, they'll only be paying for samples above what their genotyping requirement is. Look, the average suckler herd, the, the, you know, what they'll be paying per year to participate in this, as I said, would be pretty small. I use the 30 cow herd as an example. They'll be genotyping 21 for SCEP. It'll, it'll be costing them about 50 euros to genotype the remaining nine calves. So it's, you know, it's... It's not, a, it's not a huge sum there for beef herds. Um, for dairy herds, they have to be in Herd Plus to participate. And if you're a beef herd, Herd Plus or SCEP or the SCEP membership will, will do too. Um, ICBF, look, we'll be finalizing the list of herds in the next couple of weeks. We need to get moving on this because, as I said, we need to get these adult animals sampled. You know, there's a bit of lead-in time to getting button, uh, button tags ordered and sent out. Um, and you know, we need farmers then to return those labs or those uh, samples to the lab as soon as possible. Double tissue tags will be available this autumn. So for any of you that are going ordering tags, new tags, and you've signed up to the program, it'll be double tissue tags that you will be ordering and that you'll be getting in the post. OK, so I mentioned earlier, if you have tags left over and most of us will have some handful of tags left, depending on numbers, you don't have to throw them away or get replacements. Uh, there will be a, a system set up by CBF later on that will allow you to put in what tags you've left and we can then order button tags for you uh, and get those sent out and they will allow you to use up those remaining single tissue tags and then once they're used up you'll be moving on to your new box of tags which will be the double tissue ones um, any queries that farmers have look there's an email address there ngp at icbf.com or you can ring the number um, I think after Kevin's uh, next presentation there, we'll be taking a few questions as well. So look, with that, that's that's all from me. So I'll hand back to Shane there, maybe. Um, so look, thanks very much for your attention. Thanks, Chris, for a very, very informative um, presentation. Um, I, 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 I think I'm correct in saying that this, this is, I suppose, we're world leading in, in this regard, Chris, I don't think has this been done anywhere worldwide where we're taking on such a large pro program of genotyping? Uh, no, there. So we would be the first country in the world whereby calves are being registered with the, with, what I suppose, the Department of Agriculture via a DNA system. Um, so, yeah, I mean, look, in, in lots of parts of the world, animals don't have to register at all, but like I suppose the EU would probably be leading the way in terms of that, in terms of traceability. But we would be the first in the EU, definitely. And if, if we're first in the EU, we're first, you know, in the world to 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 do this, to take this on. Um, so yeah, look, it is a big step forward, and it'll be, I suppose, it'll be important for for marketing too, in terms of you know, that ultimate traceability will be a quite a quite a, um a marketing tool for us, you know.
will we'll certainly be massive, massive changes. So look, I might ask Kevin, Kevin McMenamin, um, my colleague here, based in there, Kenny Office, just maybe to, to share a screen there. Um, and we'll we'll go on ahead with the next presentation. I think you're on mute there, Kevin. Just maybe. Sorry, Shane. Just trying yeah, to get this thing. Stuff, I you know, see. One second. And I suppose Kevin, uh, ladies and gentlemen, is going to take us through, you know, the, I suppose the actual, how do we apply for this scheme? When do we have to apply and what's involved in it? Um, and uh, there's a fairly tight deadline there. So I think it's it's important that we, we all put shoulder to the wheel and get it, put it on the priority list over the next few days. Okay, Kevin, it's up and going there now. You can Thank you. see it okay. Yeah, yeah. That's lovely. Uh, so good evening, folks. Um, look, my presentation, that's, that's, Fairly, fairly simple and straightforward. Um, it's really just kind of taking you through the application process. So, um, look, this the, the the application process for this it's through the ICBF website. So, if you log on to that ICBF um, ICBF website, it's not through Ag Food or anywhere else. It's, it's on the ICBF website. They, they're administering this this scheme. So, um, if you go go to the homepage, if you are signed up. Um, Look, as, as Chris said, look, if you're a dairy farmer, you'll have to sign up to Herd Plus. Um, if you're, again, if you're a suckler farmer, you might be signed up already. Um, or look, if you're in the in, in SCAP, um, look, you'll, you'll likely be signed up already. And look, if you're not, it's, it's, look, it's well worth signing up anyway. Um, so homepage, I've just kind of a few red boxes here just to outline the thing. So it's fairly, fairly simple and straightforward. Homepage, log on. Um, when you do log on, this this is the page that you'll be. This this is screenshots from 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 my own earlier on. So that this is what any farmer will see when they log in. Um, in the middle of the page, NGP apply here. So National Genotyping Program apply here. So click on that. Um, and this is the next page that you'll see again. It's just you're kind of clicking through a few pages. There's information there if you want to see. You know, there's main benefits to the farmer, what's involved, and how will they register calves. You can click down and get more information again, um, and then you can proceed on to the next page, the, the, the green button at the bottom. When you do that, um, there's a few wee bits of information that you'll need. Most of it you'll have to hand. Um, and again, just the, the bank details. Look, you mightn't just have them to hand. So if you if you maybe just dig them out, maybe before you go doing it. Um, so again, we'll we'll go through this now. You'll see each each piece of this. So continue. Um, again, this page. Well, my own information would have been on this, but I just blanked it out. So this is what you'll see. This will be kind of pre-populated. So your herd number will be there. If you have your air code entered, your mobile number. And your email address that'll be entered and it'll show up i've just kind of blanked my, my own personal one out so again the, you're only really kind of you're confirming and save and continue so green button again um this page so again your your tag supplier um depending on who your tag supplier is so you'll have a few drop down boxes and i've just kind of expanded them here um so your tag supplier you can pick look if it's molnaho and cormac data mars or agri tags um, the second drop down box when you open that out your calf registration method so if you're doing that on your ag food page if you're doing it through Herdwatch or your software packages um, again just you select whatever one you're you're using and below that then if you're a dairy farmer or not um, if you're not a dairy farmer i suppose the box is already filled they're not a milk producer and again, look, you have an option there depending on what co-op that you're supplying. So, look, it's all fairly straightforward stuff. Um, you know, it's it's we, we have no big time taken taken out of it yet. Um, so, the next page then, if your contractor airing your heifers out, this is really a kind of a yes or no question here. But the will, you know, if you are getting your heifers contract reared on another farm, if you're a dairy farmer, uh, and and your contract rearing them out. Um, there will be an opportunity then to enter the herd number of the herd for where your heifers are at, so as they can be genotyped as well. Um, so again, green button again, save and continue. Um, this page again, look, this is the bank details. That's something they're not going to be on the top of your tongue. 
So when you do go to do it, uh, to, to do the registration for the programme, that's maybe no harm look to, to have them, you know, if you have a, a statement or something with them with them handy. Um, so again, just pop them in, save and continue. Um, save and continue. And then you'll get a few pages here. There's term, you know, the terms and conditions are the kind of the tick box checks before you complete the application. So the first one there, um, you know, that you've read the terms and conditions of the scheme. Uh, so you keep going with that one. The next one then is uh, that you'll get your button tags from ICBF and just that you're agreeing to basically tag and return the samples uh, within, you know, within 28 days of receiving them. So again, look, it's supposed to be a basic part of the program. And I suppose the third one then, uh, again, so save and continue. The third one is that, you know, as part of the program, that you're agreeing to sample all your calves at birth. So whether it's, you know, dairy beef, dairy meals, commercial, suckler calves, stillbirth, you know, et cetera, that you're agreeing to sample all the calves at birth as, as part of the program. So that's the last green box that you'll see then, uh, which is submit application. So you keep going with that. And then you're brought to this page then. So thank you for signing up to the genotype program. You should get an email then, um, to that effect as well, just to confirm it. So look, I know it's a basic process, but again, you know, most farmers maybe are used to going through their own ag food uh, or, or maybe going through an advisor or something, but look, you can sign up through the ICBF page. That, that is the place to sign up for the program. Um, so look, it's, it's a very simple process. Um, simple process, look, 10 minutes of your time and, and you have the job done. Um, I suppose just after that, you know, some of the kind of practical benefits of the program, you know, Chris has kind of touched on them there already. Um, you know, there's a huge health and safety aspect, uh, particularly on the suckler side, when you're tagging these kind of yearling or winland or, you know, year and a half old, maybe beef animals. So, you know, replacement heifers or whatever they might be, you know, there's a huge health and safety aspect to that. You're rounding up cattle maybe at a time of year that they wouldn't maybe otherwise be in the pen. Um, it's, it's kind of a once, you know, it's a, a once-off job maybe, um, huge health and safety aspect to it. So it does away with that. that is, that's a huge benefit to the program, um, is that it does away with that. Particularly suckler farms, labour is tight. Look, dairy farms similar, you know, you're, you're, you're doing all at one time. I suppose labour, you know, again, you're tagging them all in the one day. So you have to tag calves at birth anyway. That's a given. We're all taking tissue samples for BVD anyway. And we're going to the post office with those. So, you know, it's the same thing to pop another envelope in the post as opposed to spend maybe a day or a day and a half gathering up cattle again at a, at a later stage in a year and a half's time. So um, huge labour saving element to it too. Um, and I suppose the third one is the big one and something you can't just maybe put an actual figure on or it's not something you can reach for, you know, physically reach for it and say there's, you know... Um, that there's something just in front of you, but you will, I suppose, will you, when you get the sheets of paper back, you will have it. So it's information. So, you know, you have speedy, you know, you can make speedy informed decisions in terms of retaining future breeding stock. You know, I just have a few photos in there, um, you know, whether it's, whether you're in sucklers or whether you're in dairy and, you know, it's, it's really nailing down the accuracy of the figures. You know, as Chris said, um, you're, you're nailing down the accuracy of the figures and you can make, you know, you can make better decisions when you have information you can make good decisions or better decisions so and you're getting all of it at the one time you know all 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 on the one go i suppose another thing maybe as well that's worth mentioning or maybe it's only really a kind of a you know a, a, a supposition you know it's something that maybe would be compulsory in future you know the way the way the world is going and the way farming is going um, you know, what's to say in, you know, five years time that maybe the department maybe turn around and say, look, we'd like to do this with every, every animal in the country at birth. So look, if you're in the head of the game, look, I suppose you have better information, you have five years worth maybe of, you know, better heifers kept than you might otherwise have done possibly, 
and uh, look, you're ahead of the game. You're you're up and running in terms of the the program as well. You're 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 kind of up, up and with it. So, you know, there's there's new herds there that are maybe new entrants to Skep. Uh, plenty of herds there that were already in BDGP. They'll have a lot of their animals tagged, but there are new entrant her- herds to the Lake Escape. And as well as that, on the dairy side, there would be maybe very little genotyping as well. Um, you know, maybe except for bull calves, uh, for, for maybe breeding on, on, on some herds. So, you know, you'll get a, a huge kick in terms of the information that you have at your disposal. Um, you know, you have a huge a huge boost in terms of information and the quality of information that you have at your disposal. Um, to make decisions on 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 retaining stock or otherwise. So, um, look, that's just that's just a few of the uh, a few a few a few of the practical benefits of the program. So, like that that was really a lot of what I was going to say. I suppose just maybe to wrap it up. Um, just to wrap it up. Look, we're trying to get applications in for for Friday coming. As you can see, you know, it's a pretty simple process. It's a job you'd have done in, in five to ten minutes. And look at five to ten minutes of your time, you know, to gain, you know, invaluable information that you can't really put a price on. So, you know, it's as good a it be as well paid at five or ten minutes work as it's what you might do all year. Um look it's, it's you know it's, it's well worth it doing. So look, thank thanks for your for your time and attention. And you know, I'll I'll, I'll stop sharing here now. Thanks, folks. Thanks, thanks, Kevin. Look, that was a very informative um, presentation, Kevin. Thank you. And it, it's went through the steps. There's there's no real um, excuse for nobody not able to get in. I suppose the one thing just to point out is um, most dairy farmers would be members of Hair Plus, but if there's anybody on the call that's not a member of Hair Plus, it's something, I suppose, you, there's a lot of valuable information and breeding information there. But I suppose we'll look, we'll take some of the questions at this stage um, and I'll maybe ask Chris maybe to come back on there um, and, and some of the questions that are coming in. But I suppose, look, just a few of the points here that's coming is um, the simplification and registrations of the calves and, um, is, is one of the big pluses um, on, on both the suckler and the dairy uh, side of the house. And look, as well, some of the questions coming in um, on here, a farmer, a suckler farmer, if he has uh, autumn calving haired, uh, Chris, and her calving in, in autumn to 2023, can he order double tissue tags um, at this stage or later in the year um, for, for his uh, newly born calves this autumn? Yeah, so like, I mean, it, it all depends on um, how soon the farmer signs up and how soon those calves will be born. So. I suppose, look, if calves are going to be born the next couple of weeks, the time would be very tight. But if calves aren't going to be born till maybe October time, there would be plenty of time to to order those double tissue tags. That farmer, I would imagine, probably has some tags left. So as I said, they would be getting uh, buttons to finish out what they have left over. And then then it would be uh, it would be double tissue tags. If time was tight and they weren't, the process wasn't set up yet, they could just order maybe enough tags to get them through this autumn. They probably have an idea as to how many cows are in calf. We'll say if there's 10 cows to calf, if there's three tags left over, the farmer could just order seven sets of tags to get them through the autumn. And then for next year, um, go to double tissue. But it all depends on how soon those cows are going to be calving. Thank you. Um, it was the main message is get, get the application in there um, sooner rather than later. Next yeah. question here for you, Chris, is can you change tag supplier this year or do you need to stay with the existing tag supplier? No, no. So when you sign up, one of the things you'll be telling us is your tag supplier. So if you choose to change tag supplier, then then that's fine, you know. But as I said, that will be up to the farmer themselves because it's the farmer will be ordering the tags themselves. So all the farmer does to change supplier is they get tags from a different supplier, you know. They don't um they don't necessarily have to do anything with ICBF. I suppose the other <clears throat> the other one, uh, Chris, is uh for instance, uh, a dairy herd maybe going and and, and genotyping all his cows uh, this year in 2023. Perhaps maybe some of those will come back uh, when they're genotyped with different sires. Will that automatically um be corrected? on the system then or do, does the farmer have to have to do anything when he when he, he gets the results no so like the 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 um 
sires are updated automatically on on the cows. Um, dam errors then are a slightly trickier one because dams are on blue cards. Um, so look, basically what has been happening up to now is we notify the farmer of the dam error, and we just explain to them if they want to update it. You know, these are the steps they have to take. You fill out a form, you take it to your DVO, and you get the card updated. But you no, know, the sires will be automatically updated. Yeah, no, we will notify farmers as well that we're that we're changing them. You know. Right. Very good. Very good. Um, and a question here: and if an animal loses tag after registration, what what type of tag is required to replace tissue tag? Yeah, just an ordinary tag in to replace the tag because the sample has been taken, so you don't need to get another tissue tag. You know, um, the only way you'd need a replacement tissue tag is sometimes, and you would have some of you will have experienced it with BVD. You might get back a sample that comes back as empty. So in that case, then you might have to get a, a button tag just to get the sample or um, probably what will actually happen for DNA is we'll just send out a hair card for that animal as opposed to having to put a, another button tag in the ear because it's it's just that little bit quicker. Right, right. But but if, if an animal, you know, you have a calf, you tag it, double tissue tag, the DNA comes back, calves registered and six, 12, five years later, it pulls out the tag, like an ordinary tag, you know, you don't need a tissue tag to replace that then, you know. Right, right. Thanks, thanks. So look, maybe without further ado, we'll go on to the, the, the final presentation. Um, Tommy Doherty, uh, a colleague here based in the Letterkenny uh, office, uh, is going to take us through maybe some of the skip um, timelines and, and deadlines for the rest of the year. This is a scheme, a suckler uh, cow efficiency program that was uh, suckler farmers would have um, joined uh, up to up to the 27th of May, if, if I'm correct. And it's look, I suppose maybe there wouldn't be a lot of information maybe out there at the minute, Tommy, on it. And it's just important that they listen and, and adhere to some of the guidelines in, in it. Over to okay. you, Tommy. Thanks, Shane. Can you see it okay? Can indeed, can indeed, yeah. I know it's in the big it's in the big format there. It is, yeah. Yeah, very good. Look, you're all very welcome, and I'll uh, try to be as quick as I can here, right? The first couple of slides that I have, there's a little bit of text on them, but uh, the last couple of slides then uh, are coming on to the new uh, SCAP screens that's available there uh, to all farmers now that's in SCAP, okay? So, uh, I said that moving for you. Is it not bigger? Uh, yeah, perfect. So, uh, look, sorry, this uh, scheme, so the SCAP scheme is a five year program. Uh, farmers signed up there in May uh, 2023, there may gone past, uh, and they're going to be running now for the next five years, right? So, finishing in 2027. It builds upon uh, the scheme that's just finished up, uh, the BDTP scheme. Uh, was a very successful scheme, whatever farmers were engaged in the data that was been issued by the department and ICBF. Uh, this particular program, the payment rate is 225 euros for the first 15 hectares and it's 180 euros for the remaining hectares after that, okay? Just a bit of data within Donegal Sligo Leitrim is that there's 2,676 farmers signed up to it, all right? There's an average of 17 and a half cows on each of them farms. So if we look at roughly the payments that them farmers will be getting, that's 17.45 cows divided by 1.5 hectares, uh, sorry, divided by 1.5, it leaves an eligible payment, payment hectare of 11.6. So 11.6 multiplied by 225 is a payment of 2,617 euros, okay? Then out of that 2,617 uh, euros, we will be uh, the 70% the genotyping costs uh, will be paid by the farmer at a cost of 20 euro per sample. Okay. So if we look at the genotyping, just be quick with this, uh, the farmers that are signed up till uh, their requirement is to test 70% of their eligible uh, reference number. Okay. The animals are selected by ICBF. Uh, farmers have that opportunity to change these particular animals if they want certain animals tested and other animals not tested. That has to be done uh, through the ACBF system. The sampling kits uh, aren't out yet to farmers and they're only, uh, the projected plan is the mid-summer. So anytime now at all, farmers should be receiving these uh, sampling kits. 
Letters were issued uh, last week uh, to farmers uh, and it showed on their basically ag food on their uh, the SCAP tab that they were successful into the scheme. Plus it showed their uh, reference number, all right? The farmers tags animal and then again returns it back to uh, the lab. Eligible AI stock bull, uh, another, and this scheme is basically like the old BDGP scheme with dates and targets to hit, all right? So it's, it's, it's tricky to remember everything, and, but I'll show you a, a very handy tool here at the end of the slide. So year one and year two, 80% um, of the calves born need to be of high generic merit uh, for meat production or breeding. So that's either terminal or maternal traits, all right? By year three and year four, 85% of these calves that are hitting the ground need to be from these sires. And by year five, 90% of the calves. So like, I don't know, and a lot, a lot of farmers on these calls, I know there are a lot of dairy farmers on the call, but like everybody's trying to breed a better animal. Uh, and anybody that signs up to these program are using these particular sires. So it's an easy enough target to hit, provided you're working with quality AI or quality uh, stock bulls, okay? So again, the female replacement strategy, the percentage of the herds eligible animals must be from a high generic merit for breeding uh, on the national uh, profit index at the time of purchase or the time of genotyping. So by the 31st of October, 2023, so this year, we need 50% uh, uh, of our females for five star, 31st of October, 2025, 65%, and October, 2027, 75%. Time and time again, like we have to stress, this is from uh, uh, you know high index, high index animals, uh, which every farmer you know wants on their farm. Weighing again, this is new till scap. It wasn't an old BDGP scheme. Eighty percent of the calves uh, born need to be weighed each year with their dams. Okay, calves must be weighed within the scheme year uh, and must be at least fifty days of old. All right, so farmers. Uh, can use their own scales or they can borrow or hire scales, but they need to have a number and the scales need to be registered with ICBF, okay? Some farmers that have, if you have a small number of animals, they can get a technician out to weigh the animals for them, okay? The weights must be uh, recorded on the ICBF database by the 1st of November, 2023. Uh, the ICBF validates these weights using machine learning. So like, there's no point in just going out and using your eye and banging in a certain weight for each cow and not, you know, not doing the thing right because it's very easy picked up when there's cross-reference and uh, to march sales, et cetera, et cetera. All right. So look, at, this is only a very quick update on it, right? And probably the biggest thing that's pressed in there at the minute is we have a number of clients a number of farmers out there that have signed up to this program, but they're not members of uh, Board B. Again, that's a new thing. They need to be signed up and a qualified member of uh, Quality Assurance, Board B Quality Assurance, by the 16th of October, 2023, all right? And they have to continue to be an active member uh, and a qualifying member for the duration of the program, all right? So I've just put up there the number to ring. Uh, if you ring that number, 0625490, and you can order your pack from them. Uh, and, and they'll get you uh, through an audit then, all right? Uh, so if your record keeping and the, the record... Uh, the event recording, sorry, for the dam and the dam service. Again, it's similar to BDGP. It's straightforward, but you have to do it for your own uh, stock and do it accurately. You must calf at least 50% to beef breed animals uh, for the reference year between the 1st of July, 2022 and the 30th of June, 2023, and then every scheme thereafter. There was, a, there, a, there is, sorry, an option within this scheme to reduce your reference number by 20% on a yearly basis, all right? But look, at come to your own advisor or any local advisor and uh, we'll help you any of them edits or changes or any of that uh, surveys that you need, need help with. Again, this is a big one, that they must attend SCAP training course uh, and an animal handling course by the 15th of November, 2024, all right? Prior to this, farmers got paid to attend these uh, courses uh, within SCAP. There's no payment, but education is easy carried and you'll always pick up or learn something, okay? Just a quick rundown there of the payment breakdown. 
and the actions are sort of broken into five different actions. You see in the left there, one to five A and five B. So you have your eligible bull AA, et cetera. You have your female replacement strategies. You have your genotype and your weight recording and the data collection. And you see each of them action numbers, they have about a 20% waiting, all right? So bear that in mind. If there's something not done, your payment's going to be docked and then you'll be inquiring at the end of the year, why is that, uh, why is that the case? So just bear in mind uh, what they are and try to meet all the specs, right? So look, this is probably the couple of screens that I wanted to show you most. Uh, these are available now on the ICBF website for any SCAP uh, farmer. It gives you basically the, the, the reference number of a circle here in red. So this particular farmer has 19 cows. Down along the left, then it says when information is basically uploaded or updated, sorry, the 17th of May this year. Uh, the date then, so his requirement for the female replacement requirement, uh, 31st of October 2023, it requires 50% four or five star. That's a requirement number, number nine. What it has on the particular head is 13 head. It's fully compliant, all right? So if we move on down then and look at the bulls, for example, uh, or what calves were sired with the, the AI or stock bull. Out of the 13 calves, 12 of them are meeting the four or five star bull. So again, there's a green background and that means that the farmer's compliant. So this is this screen's available now for all, all the farmers that are in the scape. So just log in and check uh, what your own status is, right? Just to, there's no shocks coming close to the deadlines. This is a very, very important screen here. And we'd often get a, a call from farmers at times. I'm thinking of selling one or two animals and like, you know, should I or should I not? If you're getting tight to meet the meet the targets, you can go in through here, look at the females that are on the farm over to the right hand side of the screen again, and just double check to see if they're eligible uh, at the minute for scap or if they're uneligible. Uh, and that can sometimes make up a farmer's mind. Or again, if they want to breed off a particular animal, you can quickly look at the stars here and see what direction you, you need to be going on, okay? So the final screen then is basically the sire again. Uh, it'll show you what progeny landed on the ground. It'll show you what is the sire of that particular project. Shall it be stock bull, AI, et cetera? And it's just interesting to keep, keep, keep that uh, in mind. This particular farmer working with a good stock bull and working with AI is 92% compliant with that uh, with that action. So there's no issue meeting this 2023 uh, requirements, all right? So look, that takes me uh, to the next screen here that a colleague uh, of ours done up, Aaron Duffy there in Chagas. Like, this is a scheme that every year your targets are changing. And it's, you know, it's, it's, it's tricky to remember all these dates and all these percentages that you have to meet. Aaron came up with this basically a one page spread uh, handout. Uh, it's clearly marked with the dates on the back of this particular sheet. You write in your own reference number and you calculate what you need to meet every year going forward. Uh, and it worked very, very well. These are available up on the Chagas Facebook page here in Donegal. They're also available here at the front desk. And let the Kenny, or if you call into any advisor or email, Aaron will get you a copy of it uh, throughout the region. Uh, also, just a point here from another colleague, uh, Gary Fisher, uh, as you're all aware, it was a beef advisor here in the county for many years. He recently changed into this new position, the Climate Action Signpost Advisor, uh, within our Donegal region, Keane Devanis and Sligo Lutheran region. And Gary's out there to help all farmers. Uh, you know, look at their own farm as regards a climate action plan, et cetera. And with all these schemes, like you see yourselves, they're all payable on a per hectare basis uh, as regards to make an effective change to, to help uh, reduce the emissions, et cetera, et cetera. So look at, ring the Little Kinney office uh, if any's want to touch base with Gary or you can take a photograph of this code or it also has been recorded to get in touch with them and follow up and sign, and sign up to that particular uh, service. So look, that's a very quick rundown from myself. Uh, and any questions now between myself and Chris will do our best. Thanks, Shane. Th thank, thanks, Tommy. Um, thanks for going through that and it, and it brought me clearly the, the skip deadline. Um, just there, Tommy, I suppose a question that's come in is um, I'm a farmer in skip and I've received my tags uh, for me for me uh, calves to be genotyped. 
Should I, should I join the, the new genotyping scheme as well, or, or is it sufficient um, just to tag the calves the year, you know? Well, look at from a best practice uh, advice. Yeah, you would be better to sign up till the genotyping program along with your uh, scap requirements. Uh, again, you're gaining valuable information on the breeding stock that you have there in the farm. When you that foot and done uh, once, the same as the dairy farmer, whenever they have that level of information built up on their core breeding stock, the thirty, you know, it's 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 there to stay. And to also to breed off. So yeah, the answer is yes for all dry stock farmers too. She they sign up to it. Great, you know, great. I good. think I think as Kevin alluded to there though, like the big benefit is that farmers will be tagging the calves at birth if they do join up to the mm -hmm. national genotyping program. So herds that are in scape, they don't have to, they're not obligated to join the national genotyping program, but it would make life an awful lot easier because mm -hmm. you'll be tagging all the calves at birth. And whatever your requirement for skept in will just be taken from those samples that were submitted at birth. So there's no second job of bringing animals in to tag them. And aside from the job of bringing the animals in, look, any of us dealing with cattle know we're there trying to put replacement tags in animals that have lost them. You know, it's awkward enough. The animal is, they don't like people being at their ears and sticking tags in them. And it's much safer and much faster to tag a calf than it is to tag an older animal, you know. So I definitely think it would be worth um, all skip herds joining it because they'll save an awful lot of time getting those uh, by doing those animals apart. I suppose just to follow on from that, Chris, by tagging them apart, you know, I suppose in the, in, the, in the last number of years on the BDGP, some uh, suckler farmers in particular are waiting for maybe two or three months for results to appear. And those mm. heifer calves, for instance, were sold on maybe in the autumn without them actually having the up-to-date genotype results. And what we would have found was that some of them maybe would have made different decisions as regards what what heifers they would have kept. So, you know, next year tagging them at birth, when can we see the results uh, on the suckler side? Um, I know we mentioned earlier on the dairy side, for somebody selling calves, it, it's going to be within days. Like, But on the yeah. suckler side, when, you know, is it envisaged that it's going to be a shorter time frame? Yeah, so not only by DNA registration of the animals being tagged at birth, therefore the results are going to be there earlier anyway, but we've also updated the evaluation system where we're doing weekly genomic evals now for beef animals. So theoretically, you could have an animal where a DNA sample came in only a couple of weeks ago, and it could, within maybe being a, of being a month old, have a genomic evaluation. Um, like you said, like farmers sold animals that, you know, they might have had them sampled and maybe had to sell them a couple of weeks later before they had a genomic evaluation. They might have kept them. But even if they were going to sell them, the fact that they would have had a genomic evaluation at sale, they might have made more money. Um, farmers that maybe wanted genotype four and five star heifers to maybe meet the requirements for the program didn't want to take the chance on these animals, even though they probably would have become eligible before the deadline, the fact that they didn't say that they were genotyped and four and five star on the board at the point of sale might have come against them. So the farmer, the farmer in the, in the, regis the national registration program or the national genotyping program is going to gain in two ways because they're being sampled at birth, so they're being sampled much earlier, but also the, the length of time to wait for a genomic evaluation is now much less because we're doing those weekly uh, genomic evaluations. Great, great. Good to see that updated. And I suppose just look for for the 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 many people who are on the call just to, to draw your attention to the QA um, tab at the bottom of your screen if you want to ask any questions. And look, I'll I'll, I'll fire the questions out here. This one came in earlier um, from Noel there. If my cow is now a three star cow, and this I presume is on the on the circular side, and next year is a four star, will she then stay as a four star for the rest of the scheme? Well, it's okay. So she she will. So a cow that's currently three star say, and she's not eligible because she's never been four star. If she maybe rose to a, if she did rise to four star, it could be in the next evaluation. It could be in twelve months time. She'll then become eligible, and even if she later drops again to three star, she'll remain eligible for the rest of the program. So there's farmers need to separate. Like so, there's there's eligible for the program. She may not necessarily stay four star forevermore because she could drop her like figures are changing all the time. But from just a, a program eligibility point of view, if she hits that four star, she'll stay then eligible for the rest of the program, even if she later drops again. Just maybe following on from that, Chris, another question in there is that cow that moves 
from a three to a four star. Like, what will cause that cow to move? Or, you know, I thought she was going to be, if she's born a three star, she, mm. she's three star for life. Or, what, you know, what causes her to move a four star? What information is needed? Yeah, so, I mean, movement? if for farmers on, like, if, if they think about it, there's, there's information coming into the ICBF database every day, you know, thousands, tens of thousands of, of data records. So, for farmers in Skip, for example, they're sending in calving difficulty scores. They're sending in docility scores. They're now sending in weights that they're taking as part of Skip. There's information on cows, milkability, uh, docility. We're now collecting things like feet and legs, other scores, etc. All of that information is constantly feeding in. It could be information coming from the farmer's own herd, or it could be information coming from another herd. So take, for example, you could have a cow, she's off of an AI sire. There could be hundreds, if not thousands, of other animals out of that same AI sire in different herds in different parts of the country. And the performance of those animals can affect that cow's figures as well. So there's 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 lots of different ways that a, that a, an animal's figures can be can be can be impacted. And there's there's a huge amount of data that can feed in there. <clears throat> generally speaking, well, not generally speaking, look, if if an animal is performing well in relation to its herd mates, its figures will increase. If it's performing poor, then it will generally generally decrease. Okay, thanks, Chris. Another question in here from earlier. Um, there is um, obviously eleven cows in the herd. There's tags coming to me um, for my cows. Um, the sorry, none of my cows is genotyped. Will I get tags for all of them? So basically, if he joins up the scheme, Chris, will he get tags for all the cows that in in this herd? Yeah, so it won't be just the cows. It'll be we'll actually genotype all females, so right down to heifer calves, because they could all potentially be breeding females. Um, that's in dairy and beef herds. So, no, look, what we won't do, for example, is say a dairy herd that has dairy beef heifers. They're probably, you know, we know they're not going to go into their dairy herd, so we won't be doing those. But on a suckler herd, we'll do all of the, all of the beef females from the oldest cow right down to a heifer calf. Right, thank you. Look, I'll keep going. These questions are coming in thick and fast here. What happens with dairy cows on on ACBF system with missing sires and no, no EBA data on ACBF? Yeah, so we'll still genotype them. We may find a sire or we may not. You know, they're not excluded from the program. We'll still genotype them. So right. we'll just see what happens in when they're genotyped. If we can find a sire well and good, if we can't, then the sire was whatever the sire is was never genotyped. Right. So what you, you're basically saying there, Chris, if these cows are AI bred and just the sires aren't in there, that you'll be able to pick up from the the, the yeah. massive bank or the pool of samples yeah. that are there currently and, yeah. and predict the sire for those those cows. Yeah, and that's that's one of the huge benefits of genotyping. I mean, if you go back since the start of BDGP, there's been tens of thousands of beef animals and suckler herds that were in BDGP where we either found sires where they had no sire to start off with or where the sires were wrong and we were able to correct them. And for the dairy herds now coming in, there could be lots of dairy herds where their sires missing. Maybe they bought in some cows or bought in replacement heifers. Maybe they don't breed their own. A lot of those blanks could now be filled in if those animals are genotyped. So that, that'll really help that dairy farmer as well in, in his breeding program or in, his, in selecting cows to select for breeding uh, replacements yeah. in the future if, if sires are, are, are found. Yeah, for absolutely. And the other thing as well is that there, there'll, be, there'll be mistakes identified. There'll be sires that were wrong and it's better for the farmer to know because, I mean, even for something simple like inbreeding, you know, if, if yeah. you could, you know, there could potentially be a cow which is supposed to be able to sire A. It's being mated to sire X who could actually be related to it because the sire that's on it is wrong. But when, when the cow is genotyped, we'll be able to correct those issues. Right. Very good. Very good. Uh, just look, next point here. Uh, good informers of presentation, lads. W was in the pilot DNA program. So this is a program that has been running this last number of years. And tagging at birth is the way to go. So look, there's a, a, a farmer there that's, I suppose, happy and, and would recommend tagging at birth and, and, um, and DNA in them at that stage send the genotype off at that stage and and they're supposed the registration process is a lot easier and simplified by um genotyping the birth um can you the question here can you leave the scheme after the five years what are the predicted costs if you stay on yeah so as i said you're signing up to a five-year requirement nobody knows what's going to be there after five years what you know the department might they might make another scheme they might make it compulsory Nobody knows at the moment, but you are signing up to a five-year program now. 
the predicted cost, farmers will have to work that out themselves. As I said, it'll cost maybe just slightly over five euros per sample. So, I mean, a dairy farmer would have to say, if I'm calving 100 cows a year, it's going to cost them about five, somewhere between five and 600 euros a year to genotype all those calves. Um, so farmers will have to work that out for themselves. As I said, a herd and skip, they'll only be paying for uh, the samples over and above their genotyping requirements. So this, the farmer with 30 calves born a year with a reference number of 30, 21 are done through skip, nine will be paid for by the farmer. It'll be costing them about 50 euros per year to genotype those nine samples. So each farmer will just have to work it out for themselves based on what they're projecting to calve over the next, um, from 2024 to 2027. Thanks, Chris. Next question. If I inseminate a cow with four-star bull, but when cow calves, bull has dropped in ratings, which rating is used for skip? Yeah, so if the AI sire was ever four or five-star, they're counted as an eligible sire. So, like, if a farmer at the time of AI knows that that bull is four or five-star, no matter what happens after that, the bull is eligible at that point. So, um. Yeah, I mean, look, most AI bulls, in fairness, unless, you know, you'd nearly have to go out of your way to find an AI bull that's not four or five star on the replacement or terminal within or across breed, you know. Right. Um, question here, and if, if you intend culling your stock bull this year, and currently that stock bull is, uh, is not genotyped, can a new one uh, be genotyped? So I genotype him when you purchase him at any time in 2024 or if he hasn't got a genotype already. So basically okay. the question is, if somebody's culling a stock bull this year, um, does he have to uh, genotype him or can he wait and genotype the, the new stock bull? In yeah, my advice there would be definitely okay. genotype the current bull because you'll have calves born next spring out of him. And when it'll come to that farmer's payment at the end of 2024, he'll be penalised because the sire of the calves born in scheme year two won't have been genotyped. So he needs to get that bull genotyped, definitely. And if he's buying in a new bull, like that bull would need to be genotyped too. Now, if the bull coming in is ungenotyped, the farmer could buy him. Now, I still think it's best practice to buy genotyped bulls because you know that that bull is eligible before moving into your herd. But 100%, the current bull needs to be genotyped. Um, definitely. To, to identify a sire for the calves next year when he's do, when they're doing the well calves. well we'll know the sire because he'll have put in the sire but the problem is the department he he won't hit the 80 percent of calves sired by a genotype four and five star bull the bull might be four or five stars but if he's not genotyped there's no way he, he'll get penalized in because yes. the calves won't have been off a genotype four and five star bull yes great stuff thanks um will a suckler beef haired have to genotype bull calves yeah, so all calves in every herd signed up have to be genotyped. So for the for the suckler herds, every calf, heifers and bulls, and the same dairy herds. Dairy herds will be doing all the 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 replacement heifers, but even the dairy beef, the Frisian bull calves, everything gets genotyped. Of course, right. Uh, final question in here at the minute. If a person signed up by Friday, how soon would a farmer get tags for all his or her cows? Um, we would be envisaging samples being out within a month to six weeks from, say, sign up date. Right. Um, that'd be button tags ordered. As you can imagine, look, it'll take a while because, as I said, all samples are going to be ordered in one. So, I mean, there could potentially be seven or 800,000 samples being ordered. So the tag yeah. companies will need a bit of time, obviously, to process them and stuff as well. Great stuff, great stuff. And they'll but, obviously, they'll, sorry, just to clarify, they'll all be button tags for the cows this year. The cows, the breeding females, the heifer calves, they'll be all button tags. Right, right. Thank, thanks, Chris. Um, look, I think if we have missed any questions or we, we don't get to your questions here, um, we we will uh, try to uh, send an answer. There is names for most of them, so we'll try to contact you if there is any pressing questions. But look, I suppose... Um, first of all, I would like to maybe look say that this is it's a huge opportunity for both the suckler and the dairy industry. This is it's, it's an absolute game changer, I would say, um, as regards breeding. We, we're at, I suppose, a crossroads in, in, in both the dairy and the suckler uh, side of the house. And this this will open up, I suppose, new markets because we can guarantee um, 
great information behind our our our, um, our animals once they're genotyped and the, and the accuracy of information will be phenomenal. But a few things, I suppose, the main points here from um, uh, Chris's presentation and just wrapping it up is what's around genotyping? A simple sample can be taken, um, an, e an ear sample. But look, I suppose one thing you would say is simplification of the registration. And that's a, that's a big area of work on dairy farms in particular in the springtime, having a large number of cows, and, you know, monitoring that. And, 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 and this is this a really simplified operation for them. And the other standout is, I suppose, Chris, maybe identifying cell, high cell count or problematic cell count cows in the dairy herd by genotyping them and taking a bulk sample as well. Like it's, mm. you know, it's phenomenal the amount of information that ca can be got from this. And as well, look, I would encourage certainly, um, and, uh, and my other colleagues there would encourage um, everybody to join up to this game um, before the deadline of Friday. Um, the other one, I suppose, from Kevin's presentation there, the main points is, look, he talked you through and sh showed you the, the, the log on as regards logging into um, ICBF and Hair Plus and join up to the scheme. If you have any problems in that, I suppose they'll come back to us or, or contact your local advisor and we'll um, definitely help it uh, you, you, and uh, getting registered. And I suppose Tommy then went through the skip um, herds there and what do they have to look out for the rest of the year? It's it's um, it a lot of, I suppose, um, things we need to meet there as regards to suckler farmers to meet the criteria to have that number of, uh, of uh, percentages and star rated cows and the number of calves registered uh, to four and five star bulls. So look, that's important. Um, what's tonight's, um, as it was, what's tonight's presentations? Um, they give you a lot of information and this this uh, is recorded, this webinar is recorded. So look, we will make it available to people, maybe not in the call or if you're in the call and you want, you know, to, to follow up on, on some of the information, it, it, it's there um, and it'll be it'll be made available. So look, I suppose the one other one is standing out and, and I suppose tonight you'll notice that both dairy and suckler herds are brought together. And I think it's important that look, as farmers, we're all in together is... And we've come under, as farmers, we've come under a bit of pressure over the last number of days for certain things. But the 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 value, the CBV value, and the information that this is going to create on the dairy side for suckler and dry stock farmers to purchase good quality uh, beef bred calves is phenomenal. That the accuracy of that information and how how that's going to be made available for everybody to work together. And I suppose at the end of the day, that the both industries, that there's money at the end of the year, there's some profit left there for everybody. And I suppose that, I suppose, is the key here, um, that everybody work together, we're all farmers. And look, if that problem of CBV and highlight that, if nothing else, Chris went through that, it's, it's very, very important and it's probably a game changer. So look, without further ado, I would like to thank um, Chris Daly for coming on to the call and giving a massive amount of uh, in-depth information on uh, the scheme and breeding. Um, thank you, thank you, Chris. And look, it's it's great to have you coming from Cork on a, a July night and available. To my own colleagues, Tommy Doherty and Kevin McMenamin, who are both based here in the Letter Kenny office for um, providing uh, the presentations and going through it in depth. Also, I'd like to uh, to thank. Um, Priya, who, who, who's uh, based in the Balbafay office for a lot of the behind the scene work and our, and our regional manager, James Kane for setting this up. There's a lot of work goes on behind the scenes to put these together and, and to have an informative night. So look, without further ado, thank you. And I would remind you all the date. The deadline is this Friday, the 14th. And look, it's a fairly simple process. So look, encourage everybody uh, to apply for the scheme. And if you need any further information, don't be afraid to contact us. Okay, thank you and good night. Thank you. Good night. Thanks, boy. Good night.